Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you, my fellow millennials, should understand and adopt. But first, a little word from our very first sponsor, the Bitcoin conference in Amsterdam. In a little over three weeks, from October 12 to 14, the most brilliant minds in Bitcoin from across Europe and beyond will come together for three days of learning, teaching and inspiring the Bitcoin community. This will be my very first Bitcoin conference that I'm attending and I'm eager to learn, engage and party with other Bitcoiners. What I already know is that the location in Amsterdam is incredible. If you want to join us, use my promo code BFM for 10% of your tickets. That's BFM to get 10% of your tickets. It would be awesome to see you there. Now let's move on to this episode of Bitcoin for Millennials. Today I'm joined by Alessandro Ottaviani. He works in a senior operations role at Amazon during the day and in the after hours he's been diving deep into Bitcoin. He firmly believes that at the core of the world's biggest problems lies an economic issue, a lack of good money, and this is of course precisely what Bitcoin can fix. Hence the well-known fix the money, fix the world. In March 2023, Alessandro published a comprehensive article titled Understanding Bitcoin in 2023, which we will go through in this conversation and I will share a link to it in the show notes. Enjoy this episode and let me know what you think. Welcome, Alessandro. Ram, and uh, thanks to having me and to have invited me. I'm very happy to join uh, your podcast. Yeah, man, happy you're here. Like I, uh, I just said to you off mic, like this is kind of my own way of uh, sharing my own thoughts, but also, uh, you know, hearing what other people's fe- other people think, learn about that. And uh, yeah, I really liked your, your tweets and your articles. So I thought uh, to invite you and we can jam on why it's so hard to actually understand Bitcoin. And uh, yes. I love to see that in your article, it really feels like it, uh, it was kind of like an exercise for you to you know, put your own thoughts on paper. So uh, we'll definitely, definitely uh, dive into that. But first, a quick check, like to which generation do you belong? Are we are, are you a fellow millennial? I still a millennial. Yes. I'm 38 years old, so I'm the upper part of millennials. Ah, and how did you first become interested in investing in finance? Uh, firstly, I started um, beginning of 30s uh, when uh, generally people have uh, some uh, savings. It's getting more interesting in what to invest and um, what will be safe, less safe. So I started normally uh, with ETFs or stocks or bonds. And in 2017, I get to know about Bitcoin. I think as uh, 99 or 90 plus percent of the people, it was all in 2013 or 17 or 21. It was for the number go up because the stock mm-hmm. was going up and uh, yeah. get interested. After the crash in 2018, 19, uh, um, I dismi- kind of dismissed it, I think as many people. Then mm-hmm. I started again in 2020 and uh, from to the end of 2020 till now, um, I started in 2020, I started to study deeply Bitcoin. Uh, also, one of the key notes, key moments was the um, uh, the um, call between uh, the podcast between Bridlove and Sailor, then the book, The Bitcoin Standard. Mm-hmm. And from that has become my, my one of my hobbies, one of the, my most important hobbies uh, to study Bitcoin. Awesome. And um, what was what was the thing that first got you interested? Like what what, what was the hook there? Firstly, yes, as I said, the people were talking about this and the, the, mm-hmm. sto- the price was going up. Then uh, Just was the, price, the topic yeah. related about money, and uh, I mm-hmm. also realized uh, that uh, with and this also is explained in our in my article. One of the reasons why it's so hard to understand Bitcoin is uh, even qualified people who have uh, great uh, good careers, uh, great uh, studies, they have a very poor knowledge of money. Me myself, I I would never really deeply question what is money, where money mm-hmm. comes from, what is good money, Same. what is not. And this was yeah. the key um, key question for me. Mm-hmm. Is the, as Robert Bridlow said, is the question of the question is the biggest yeah. question in our world. Yeah, I think it's very interesting that that, and it's fun to hear that you're also like a fellow millennial. Like uh, I think I said that in the in in, in uh, one of the past episodes as well. Like we never learned about this, right? Like it yeah. just existed especially in the western part of europe like everything was going okay we had no problem there was we just 
it just worked basically it just, right yes. and yeah you and so for, that's you why i for think granted as uh, oxygen uh, or uh, yeah exactly. gravity exactly yes <laughs> yeah exactly so it just works and you never really think about it and uh, i think same as you like early 30s um i realized that i had no clue how the system that i was participating in actually worked and that's kind of also where where my journey uh, began so I wanted to ask, like, what, what do you think is the biggest thing that people don't understand about the financial system and why should they actually understand it? But perhaps you could answer for yourself, like, what didn't you understand before and, and what do you understand now? Uh, what I was uh, thinking before, as you said, it was given for granted that it should be okay, it is okay or it is good that the money are coming from the government and that money should come from the government. Uh, in reality, what people should understand, and it's hard to understand uh, being in the system, is that um, money should not be coming from the government, but should come from a free market based on different properties. And uh, if it was free choice, uh, we would never choose as society this kind of money that can inflate uh, um, as much as the people, as much as uh, uh, the central bankers want. And this is a bad for form of money. Link it to this. One big thing that uh, people should understand is that uh, there is not good inflation. The only good mm -hmm. inflation is deflation. And this is hard to understand because there are many pushbacks. All right. And when you say deflation, you mean true technology, eventually yes, you can everything it. becomes cheaper? From the history of money as society, we always chose um, as the first property is cars. So mm -hmm. uh, the asset that is harder to produce. Uh, many people think that still gold was uh, um, used mostly for its utilities or because it's uh, nice to have, brilliant. That's not true. For sure, it should have some utility at the beginning to be chosen as uh, money, money. But the first characteristic was that it was scarce. It was scarce to produce. And yes. uh, every year it increased only one or between one and two percent. Most of the gold we are using is still the gold that we're using in ancient Rome or Greek or in ancient China. Also, it's durable and other properties. Yeah. And uh, if we choose the scarce, the scarcer, the scarcer asset uh, uh, is the one that we choose. So finite, uh, finite supply or uh, the most scarce should be chosen. Why mm -hmm. do, now we have uh, a system where uh, the year-over-year -year, uh, average increase is seven percent, something that is really complete with money. On this, yeah. as uh, Jeff Booth wrote in his uh, in his book, uh, The Price of Tomorrow. If every year we become more productive, more technological, also my job in Amazon is also to improve the performance, become better. So if it, the money money is scarce and uh, we increase with uh, with technology, the price should go down year over year. Yeah. Overall, for sure, there could be some price that go mm -hmm. up or down based also on the supply, but the overall trend should be a deflation. And would you agree if I say that that is also kind of an example of proof of work in a sense that when you make something better or more technological advanced that it actually democratizes access to it and therefore the price goes down, right? So there is work done yes. and, and, and something comes out on the other end, right? And when you compare that to creation of money by banks, there's no work done basically. Correct. In fact, the proof of work was always at the beginning uh, of uh, something to be become money. Also, the Yap mm -hmm. in the Yap Island, the Ray Stone, everything, or Agibert beads in um, Africa, or whatever we use, salt. It, it was always hard to produce, and it also yes. meaning the sum of the effort made by the people to produce. Otherwise, it's, it will not be money because. Uh, yeah. Also, money is uh, one of the best definition. Definition is a tool to transfer value um, across time and space. And time mm -hmm. is very important because you want to the, the hours that you put into work, you put in an asset that you want that you keep the value year over year. Yes. The the problem, and as so, you said, is how uh, can mm -hmm. the problem, as you said, is in no problem. Actually, we we are lucky in uh, West Europe uh, and in the West world. Let's say that uh, inflation is still not so high to recognize these um, bugs or these problems. 
But if you see in Turkey or in Argentina, where inflation is more than 100 percent, it's clearly uh, it's more clear which is the problem. And that's one one of the reasons why still in the Western world, it is hard to, to believe. In the last one or two years, there are more people are interested because inflation spiked to six, eight, ten percent, uh, but it still is not affecting uh, our daily life. Mm-hmm. Not, not and, as much as uh, in other countries. Sorry. Yeah, and so when you say you know save you, that energy across space and time, would that also be your explanation of what a store of value is? Because that's a term that a lot of people use for Bitcoin, right? A store of value. Yes, um, exactly. Firstly, for store of value is across uh, time. Uh, for for money to be a good form of money, it should have a store of value, me- medium of exchange, and unit of account, meaning uh, transferring value across time, space, and um, and scale. But at the, at the moment, for the first step for bit- Bitcoin will be ca- will be to be biggest store of value, and it's exactly what you said. Um, we work. We save, we generate more than work. We generate value for the society, and for that we we get something in return. And uh, we should use uh, what we have got back. We should put into savings, on into something that we know that it will not decrease value over yeah. time, or even better, it should increase the value. Yeah. So because you put work or energy into a job or a venture. And you agree with the person who buys uh, or who hires you or buys your product or bu- buys your service, what the price of that input is, price in the numbers of the of the currency that you use, yes. right? That, sh- that should represent that energy, quote unquote. Exactly. And conceptually, you want to be able, if you don't want to spend the energy when you get your reward, if you don't want to spend it on something uh, for yourself, then you should be able to save that energy in time to the point where you actually want to spend it. And again, conceptually, that should be the same amount of energy represented in the, in that future, future. point exactly. in time. Yeah, but currently that's not the case, right? That's not the case and we're <laughs> experiencing in the last uh, years uh, where uh, everyone, mm-hmm. unless yeah. got, a, especially if you work for a company, um, unless you got a promotion or a big increase in salary, became poorer. Also because not only inflation, but normal goods, like basic life goods like grocery are became much more expensive than 7 or 8%. I think everyone is noticing this. And so how, before we go to Bitcoin, how does the... How do the flaws of the current money tie in with that? How do you see that? Uh, the problem because the is, money is uh, broken. Yes, yeah, uh, you said that. The problem is uh, inflation changed um, meaning uh, in the last 100 years. At the beginning, it was inflation meaning inflation in uh, the money supply. And now if you ask, uh, because it's the first or the biggest cause of the inflation in terms of prices. Uh, there are also videos from... Um, um, no, Ayak, uh, the, the other, uh, mm-hmm. I forgot the name, but it was saying also exactly the, the inflation, uh, the biggest um, cause of inflation is monetary. So if you ask general people, uh, normal people in the street, you ask which is the cause of the inflation, they will say short of supply, war or Russia or many other things. Uh, but, uh, but in reality, it's because the money increase. And especially from 2020, yes. uh, they increase uh, in, in US, they printed $4 trillion. And second is the expansion of money uh, due to fractional reserve banking. With fractional reserve banking also with the banks, firstly, they had to keep only 10% of their reserve in the bank. And now even 0% is not linked yeah. to anything. Uh, money increased and expanded. And if you have the same service and same goods, but the same, um, but the with a 10% more money supply is inevitable that the price increase. And even worse, for the medium low class, it increased even more because the people who have assets like houses or stocks very likely will do better than those who live paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. So it's not even increasing the prices, but inequality and the rich become richer and the poor poor become poorer. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point, right? Also the 
the difference between price and value, right? Because a cucumber is still a cucumber and a bread is still a bread and a coffee is still a coffee. And, um, right. So the value of these things, basically what, what, what I can get out of it is the same, but the number in the currency goes up. Is, uh, yes. Right. So that's the, that's the price. And I think uh, actually yesterday I was in, in a discussion also on Twitter with someone with, and I find it very interesting. Also, you said that in the beginning there, like there's so many people who I find or or they, they look like they are very intelligent. So I was in discussion with a guy, like some senior engineer so, somewhere at some company. I didn't know him, like it was, uh, it was a random Twitter <laughs> Twitter uh, discussion, but he looked like a super, as a super smart, intelligent guy. And I tried to make it as simple as like, you know, there's 1000 units of a money and you own one and tomorrow, uh, there's 2000 units of the same one in money and you still own one, which means in total, your, your one, just, an, you know, your one unit is worth less, right? That's not about price. It's about the worth in the, in the, yes. in the total thing. It's a, yeah, values. And when you then go back to, for example, if the cucumber is still cucumber, right? Which costs X amount of energy to produce. Right. There's certain energies also could be another word for value, right? Like there's, there's value that goes in and value that goes out in the production of a cucumber. That is the same, but because the, the numbers are diluted, right? Or the value is diluted. The number in price has to go up to represent oh, yes. the same value, you know, uh, of, of, of the cucumber in that sense. And I tried to make it as stupid as possible like this. And I don't even know what his answer was, but it was just so he was like digressing and yeah. like ignoring and uh, saying all these other things. And sometimes I I think what I find difficult is that how I like to operate, like my growth mindset point of view is just know that I don't know everything. I know that I'm really interested and. I'm happy to say when I don't know something, right? But yeah. I sometimes feel when I talk about Bitcoin and money that people take such a stance and have such big arguments as to Bitcoin is a fraud or the crypto or the whatever they say, it doesn't really matter. But then I f feel like, okay, I, I know my time that I spent in, yeah. into this, right? I, I can honestly say 10,000 hours plus. Okay. 20,000, maybe even 20, in, 000. in 10 years, in 10, ah, in 10 years, okay, in yeah. 10 years, I think. Yeah. So impressive. And, Man, and I still agree that I don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and people, well, you only need 250, but <laughs> no, yes, yeah. uh, but still, yeah. right. So <laughs> I would say for me, I, yeah. I would say 1000, but if I say 1000, then uh, many more people will just, okay, I don't have 1000 hours. Um, on on your uh, for you're referring to the article right for this 250 at least mm -hmm. the basic well but also <laughs> yeah yeah the 250 but I, uh, to finish my point like what i think is that, that it's such an uh, a subject that you have to investigate and discuss yeah. about you know and and what i feel and then i'll get to that question why is it so hard to understand bitcoin because that is in your that is in your article as well i find it very difficult to um to talk to these people because yeah. uh, in trend, uh, like I, I want to help them. I want to show them. I want to show them what I learned. Right. But they take such a counter stance based on, and this is an assumption, but I do really feel like that when I am in a discussion like that, just not enough research to actually understand what their argument is. Right. It comes from like this emotional place. Emotional. It's not like a rational uh, conversation. And yeah, maybe then to get to, to yes, what we, I, I totally agree. Article. I think everyone yeah. feel the same, and um, I think this is there is a common path among Bitcoiners. There's also some meme related to this. So, firstly, I say mm -hmm. everyone gets Bitcoin at the price they deserve. So, if they don't understand now, yes. very likely they will save in Bitcoin when it will be 500k, 600k, 700k. It's not our fault. Uh, it's their fault if they didn't listen to us. <laughs> First, mm -hmm. uh, second, I think when everyone starts to 
mostly understand Bitcoin is trying to proactively educate other people or trying to orange peel other people. And then he got a lot of pushback because also it's also very counterintuitive. We will see in the article. You have to say that money is uh, broken and the actual system is not working. It, you have to understand economics, technology, energy use, mathematics, politics. Uh, no one... Uh, before understand, before deciding to study Bitcoin is knowledgeable on all of these uh, um, topics. And you have to be knowledgeable in each of them at least a certain level in order to understand yeah. the whole package. Yeah. So now I changed. Uh, there was a, one of the meme of 2021 was uh, during, it was still a bull run and it was like uh, Christmas evening or Christmas lunch for 2021. And they were saying, no one is really, no one is interested if you have a new girlfriend, which are uh, your job, which your promotion. We should keep the conversation laser focused on Bitcoin, <laughs> just about Bitcoin. But then yeah. I started to change um, the mindset because uh, if there is not a curiosity, uh, I wrote also in the article, if there is not a curiosity from the person, uh, I don't think we should be so much uh, proactively discussing about Bitcoin. For me, I know uh, if someone is asking me, they, um, people uh, or colleagues or pe uh, friends in Twitter, they know that uh, I'm proposing Bitcoin. And, and I think they see from my post that uh, it's not just because uh, I wake up or I read uh, one book or something and I'm proposing. There is a yeah. big, no uh, good enough knowledge, let's say, uh, at least to have some statements. And uh, I am also more... Uh, if they are interested, they can quest they, they come with a question and I, I should be ready to answer. And this also one, uh, maybe, the, uh, no, maybe is the biggest reason why I wrote the article, because I, I was expecting firstly a bigger bull run that was in March. And then now we are stable since the last four months. And uh, in case someone was asking me more about Bitcoin, I decided to decide this article also for me to structure the thought, but also to give him half an hour reading. This is what you should know basically about Bitcoin. And at yeah. the end, there are the choices. I don't know if you saw, if you decide to deep dive, then I will be very happy to guide you, tell you the material and discuss. But if yeah. there is not uh, this uh, curiosity, I had several talks where I saw also a lot, we're talking about energy. It's like a waste of energy and time for us. Because uh, some, if they are not curious, they are not willing to challenge the actual system. Uh, there is no chance to understand, they understand Bitcoin at this point of time. Maybe they will understand yeah. in two years, in four years. It's like the internet at the beginning of the 90s. Very, mm -hmm. a very few people, a, a small elite of people understood that the, how big it would have been because they decided to deeply study internet at the time. And now the most stupid guy in the street, if you ask which is the biggest invention of the last uh, generation, they will say internet. 100% agree. All right, let's, let's take the jump to your yes. article. Uh, I think uh, the second the second point, so it's uh, six six big um, kind of like sub points in total that make yes. up your article. And I'll again, I'll link to it in the show notes. And I think the second point is about why it's so hard to to understand Bitcoin. So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the, the key concepts that people find difficult to understand Bitcoin? Okay, first, uh, so new technology, if you study the East, that is a new technology. If you study history, it's clear every new technology, it was hard to understand. Uh, second, it's uh, so much multi um, topics that I listed at least 12 different topics. Yeah. And as I said before, no one has the knowledge to um, be able to make some state, some educated statements because uh, I had to study money. I studied what is the blockchain at a basic uh, intermediate level, but I should know what is the blockchain, at least mm -hmm. how it works. Then uh, you should know also about uh, mathematics, something about mathematics, uh, energy usage, and so on. Third, many they they are in the trap that they think okay there is bitcoin there are 15000 altcoin then there should be another one new bitcoin and no it's not only a new technology but it's something special it's like almost perfect uh, new technology then there is the link of uh, mathematics you should know with big numbers we are good with a million billion with trillion start to struggle but also with quadrillion and quintillions our brain uh, if we don't do deep thoughts <laughs> yes. we are we are struggling to understand 
Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the biggest is, uh, as I said before, is the poor knowledge of economic and money. And that, uh, last but not least, is so much counterintuitive and there there are so many misconceptions. In fact, I don't blame really the people if they say they dismiss at the beginning. I think Mm -hmm. every Bitcoiner at the beginning dismissed, like, what's that? Like, it's a joke. Especially if you start in 2011, 13, 14. Yes. Um, but even I few, bought few at uh, yes. I bought at three four hundred and I sold and at four thousand. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but still a good uh, good. But okay, I, I, would have been better now. But yes, agree. <laughs> so I, it's it's not even it's not even a flex anymore because it's. Uh, it, but I think it's just a nice example. I also had. Uh, not these, but I bought for Bitcoin, I bought headphones, which eventually were, I think, $8,000. And, and they already broke in the meantime, so ah. I don't even have those headphones anymore. <laughs> yeah, but this is, is part of the process. Uh, and no mm-hmm. one who would have bought so early, you need uh, at least uh, two or three years. From the moment you start to the moment you become a Bitcoiner, at least it will take two years. So nothing, I think to everyone who started to learn in 2013, 16, 17, there was also not so much material. And the risk that he would have failed, uh, it was higher than now. But now, I think, now there are pe- there are few, we, like we are few, but there are people who propose about Bitcoin. So yeah. five years from now, you can regret, oh, I should have bought in 2000. Yes, because at least every person knows someone who is interested in Bitcoin. Yes, I 100% agree. I think... I don't know where we are, but uh, but yeah, I I would agree with what you say. Like e- everyone knows at least one other person who's into Bitcoin. I I would agree with that. And even when I say that, I still find it very interesting that we are at such an early adoption still. Like uh, I don't know how many people, maybe a hundred, two hundred million people actually have Bitcoin. You know, like it's. Yeah, it's just so small. I will con- I will consider even less. Like uh, I also hear people. Oh, I orange during the taxi driver. I orange peel the taxi driver, and uh, he he open a wallet and he put one hundred bucks into Bitcoin. Yeah, this that's for me not is orange not. <laughs> I think uh, no. for people who have a well, what is orange peeling? That's a great question. Yes, yes. I think to have a significant amount of your savings in Bitcoin at least. Um, otherwise. Yeah. Uh, at least 10, 20 percent. So moving and, from the broken system into the superior system. Exactly. And I, I assume that uh, for me, I calculate 0.00175 percent. So around 100 K, 100,000 people who knows enough uh, to make conscious mm. uh, decision. I don't think we are uh, many more. Yeah, very interesting. I I find it fascinating to think about what is going to happen with these ETFs. Like in my uh, ah. in my last episodes, we talked yes. about the ETFs that are launching, and I think the the marketing mach- machine will uh, uh, will be in overtime, uh, overdrive. I want to say, yeah. and uh, BlackRock is really going to uh, educate the market. I think for us at least to some degree. And then people will hopefully also discover that uh, you probably rather want to have, you know, the real asset versus yes, the, yes, paper, the paper totally version. Agree. But but that will, that, that I think that will give it a, a great launch pad. But uh, but yeah, very, uh, it's very inter- intriguing to think about 100,000 people that actually understand it. Yes, I think we are not maybe 200,000. I don't think we are 1 million. And also if you go to, I went to two conferences and there are also there people who, when you talk, okay, they are interested in Bitcoin, but uh, also if, for me, if they're interested also in altcoin, meaning uh, in a significant way, uh, it means that they really didn't understand completely Bitcoin. Back to the yeah. ETF, I'm also agree with you. And I see also in the Bitcoin community, there is a diff- very different opinion. For me, it's one of the most um, positive reasons, um, news about this Bitcoin ETF. And is uh, inevitable on the adoption. Because I yeah. think we need to see, we, firstly, we need to realize that uh, the people coming from, uh, for the censorship resistant uh, reason, uh, or a crypto anarchist or libertarian, uh, the percentage in the Bitcoin world is much higher 
than the percentage in the real world. Yes. So most of the people coming in the real world will not come because uh, they want to have uh, something that they can own. They will come because they want to save their money and they want something that is going up in the long term. And uh, regardless of what we do as Bitcoiner, the average person, an Italian is called uh, Mario Rossi, like uh, in the mm -hmm. problems in uh, Germany is Max Musterman or uh, Joe Smith in U US, I don't know in Netherlands which name they use, will not, <laughs> will not buy Bitcoin because we say them to buy, but buy Bitcoin because the financial advisors will tell them to put 1, 2, 3% in Bitcoin. And the financial advisor will never say that. So far, uh, there is not an ETF. And so far, there are not companies who are leaders in the world who move in that direction. Yeah. And there are also risks, but uh, the risks that I see are technically possible, but practically for me are not real. Like that, they, I don't believe that Black, uh, BlackRock would uh, first your fork or uh, make paper Bitcoin. There are audits, they have a great reputation. So I don't believe that they will uh, yeah. sell more Bitcoins. I fully agree. I think, and that's what I really love about Bitcoin, it's ultimate transparency. So you cannot, you can try to mess with it, but it, it will come back to you because it's just a public ledger. 10 times and, more. And you, Exactly. So I, I, I agree with you. Like I, I also agree that BlackRock in many ways is very dubious, <laughs> dubious, uh, that, uh, yes. um, okay. you know, institution in that sense. But I also agree. Um, I think uh, British Hoddle uh, said that on the first episode, um, you know, it's inevitable because they understand, like they really understand, yes. you know, I think Hoddle also said in another video, you know, do you, do you think that there's like one or two people at BlackRock, like working on this? No, there's a hundred no. people yes. who got the mission. This is your life mission. You have to understand Bitcoin inside yes. out and figure out what this is. And they know, like they understand, they really understand. And it's like, it's like you found the mother load of gold in uh, what is it California before before the gold rush started Good. yes you found and uh, they know and they know there's gold and they are a financial institution their whole way of making money is by making money for others and it's the perfect way to you know even though we know that that money is broken that we believe that you know I agree with you we are th that's not we are not going to change that now yes but if we exactly. if we can show and if it's going to be known that Bitcoin is the best asset ever invented T totally in the world, agree. It will never then happen that's that, enough. Uh, it will never happen that we move from this system to everyone owning a wallet in one shot. No. Uh, and as you said, it's a path. Firstly, people maybe will buy in ETF, then will be interested in Bitcoin, then maybe they, some they will open wallets yeah. and uh, some not. And this also should be okay because it looks like if you don't have, if you don't own your Bitcoin, then uh, it's it's absolutely not okay. It, uh, for me, this is depend of the person, because also the banks of hundreds hundreds of years ago they were created also to own the value of one person. Maybe some people, especially older people, they are not okay to own something by themselves. And if they send uh, the transaction to the wrong address, money are gone. And if they lose the private key, money are gone. Maybe Bitcoiners at the moment, they are okay, but they cannot expect that everyone is okay. No. And another important point, then we can move to another point, is uh, many, days they say, yes, but if they buy a Bitcoin ETF, it's not a real asset. And they, they, they lose uh, the um, properties of sending Bitcoin 24-7 and speed of light. So technically, it's correct. But uh, yes. the Bitcoin narrative as medium of exchange uh, is not there yet. I think using Bitcoin as medium of exchange for the normal person in the West world, or even the merchant, from now in the next five years, it will not make any difference or a very small difference, unless you are interested in Bitcoin and new technology or you want to try new thing. But the difference uh, will, not, uh, will not make difference. And I also understand people saying it's too volatile, I have credit card, so we are not there yet. So not yeah. using it as a medium of exchange, uh, uh, for me, at this point of time, is not that uh, relevant. The most important is store of value. And the good yeah. thing, 
people who will buy through BlackRock are holders, are not speculators. They will not move according to the market. Very likely, they will put 2% of their portfolio in Bitcoin and they will leave it. And this is how yes. people should do. I agree. I, I also think that I um, forgot his name, but the ex-PayPal uh, CEO who has a lightning company. I just saw a video of him today. Ah, yes. And he he talks more about, and I also agree, I, I, I'm not sure if we are ever going to actually pay with Bitcoin, yeah. but I do believe, and I think that's what he mentioned in that um, video of today, um, that Bitcoin is the ultimate settlement layer, which means that, for example, now if I pay you through my bank, then the number on both our bank accounts changes, right? But that does not mean that your bank actually has that money, right? That comes in like a few days later days, yes. through all these different layers that uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't I don't even know, but I know that it works yeah. like that. And with Bitcoin as a base layer for transactions, you can actually have that final settlement. So if I even send you through Lightning, uh, I'm from America and I send you dollars and you get those in euros, um, then there's still dollars and euros, but underlying the value that I want to send you is actually at your bank at that moment. Oh, okay. right? So the, fi the final settlement is then actually there. And so I think whether it's called dollars or USDC or euro or something else, that doesn't really matter in the future. Like I think that even that base layer it's like it's like we have built what was tried to build on gold, right? With the money yeah, that represented a certain money. amount of gold. But then actually, in a digital world, a, a fully transparent, fully auditable, all these things. So actually the perfect asset-backed money system that can be used anywhere in the world at the speed of light, almost for free. That's, I think, for now at least, my... Uh, my biggest thought as to where where it's gonna go. I think, and I don't know if we're gonna buy the cucumbers in in <laughs> Satoshi. Oh, it's Bitcoin. a good statement, I uh, and I think this is also what the state the common statement from people who really are very focused on the part of store of value. I also I would say if Bitcoin is not coming store of value, then uh, all the hours I spend, then there's something wrong in all the hours that I spend because I think it's inevitable I, that I will said become the exact same. I, store of value. Yes. Medium of exchange yeah. we, is also very hard to predict because technology is going ahead so much that one, let's say Bitcoin reaches store of values. We will have other tools, other technology um, for facilitating paying, paying in Bitcoin that uh, it's very hard to predict. So for me, it's yeah. still a question mark. It could be because it helps all like gold, doesn't have the properties as medium of exchange. It's not divisible. Port portability is also not easy. You have to hide uh, while with Bitcoin is different. So it has all the properties, but it's not sure. And we will see. And it's not the main topic at this moment. Also. Yeah, I fully agree. So last part of understanding Bitcoin and why it's so hard. Like what, what are some of the ways to explain Bitcoin to people who are new? Like what's your, what's your go-to few sentences yeah, uh, here? Well, the few sentences, we will need more, but the, one of the <laughs> yeah, sentences, I know, I know. first is to start uh, with how the system uh, that it is with the inflation that we have now, I make this example and saying that is uh, related to um, supply mon uh, supply of money, and then I explain the property of money, and then I, I ask the person what what is money, where money coming from, and even more important, if the government is printing money, where this money is are coming from, and many they are not replying. Yeah. Uh, but for me, even if in few sentences I always highlight it, that it's very hard, and they need uh, 100 hours to just scratch the surface and 250. This also is uh, is a very important topic is like uh, the entry level is very high and if the person is not willing to spend uh, 250 hours to try to understand bitcoin then unfortunately his intellect uh, at this moment is not fit to understand it similar to yeah. the marathon everyone who want to run, write uh, want to run a marathon in uh, let's say three hours 15 minutes 
understand that for sure he has to get some information from the trainer, but then he needs to do the train. People can uh, make you, uh, guide you, but then you, you have need to do, to the, do work. the training. You have to do the work. <laughs> yeah. And the yes. same with, but with Bitcoin, this is not uh, is not understood. This is what the, the, for me the biggest message we have to pass. Yeah, it's such an amazing philosophical concept. I also think like that. Yes, the, the actual invention is called. I, I think the main invention of Bitcoin, the, the 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 proof of work, I think is one of the main things, and that comes back in everything. Because, yes. you See, know, back in the whole, in the entire concept of the fact that you have to do the work, but also understand what we talked about. If you currently do the work, like your job or your, or, you know, <laughs> or, or you have a company, you do the work, but you don't get uh, energy in return that is represented, uh, you know, where that work or that value is represented like this. So the proof of work comes back in, in, in everything many different ways. Here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love, I love how. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it makes me smile. Like that. No, that, no, for me, that uh... makes the invention of Bitcoin so. It's a beautiful thing. It's uh, it's amazing. It you goes know? also yeah. to sociology, politics, philosophy. So it's a mix of uh, a mix of topics. That is why. Yeah. yeah also, your podcast is um, dedicated, dedicated to millennials. I think it should be to the upper part. Uh, People in the 20s uh, are, um, I think they, it's, it's harder for them because they have different maybe priorities. But mostly, I think when you reach 30s or begin of 30s, you start to have some savings and maybe you ch you also search uh, other or hobbies or um, thanks, th something to research on top of your work. And I, I think that is um, the percentage, the portion of population that it should be uh, the first um, goal for yeah. us yeah i hope so that's also i think one of the the main yes, drivers you know uh for for these people but especially for their families also right like i uh, think yes. yes i think this is for us the best opportunity to actually create and store our wealth and um yeah to to give that also to our family so that's really uh my main driver um, as well also for the society in general, like uh, as a, the biggest problem we have in the world or one of the biggest is monetary and because the money is broken. If we contribute to change the monetary system, to upgrade and to have a better mm -hmm. monetary system as a, we, lower, we lower our time preference, we become more long term oriented, the whole society in, um, improve and is the process of civilization as it yes. was since thousands of years. So Bitcoin can enable this. It, it gives a great feeling uh, uh, to wake up and uh, spend portion of your time uh, for this uh, purpose. That's also the magic yes, things. There is I no agree. marketing team, no engineering team, no, le no CEO. Mm. And now we are in a podcast. I, I created, uh, I wrote an article, uh, YouTube videos, and you are doing a podcast. Nonetheless, there is no company behind. That's also a magic thing. You, as me, and as many others. Yeah, uh, I, I love that thought. And I 100% I, I agree. It's a very... At one point, it just became an intrinsical motivation. I got an intrinsical motivation to share this with others just like you. And and maybe this ties into the next question where I wanted to ask you about like what are common misconceptions, you know, and how does that affect people's understanding of Bitcoin? But some yes. people say like, oh, it's a Ponzi or you are invested and you want to get this other person invested. And that's why you okay. talk about it. And I, I almost, I love, I, I, I love saying this, but I think that this is a very simple and stupid rebuttal yeah. actually of my honest, um, my honest interest, my honest motivation, the yes. fact that I spent so much time in understanding this, challenging myself, understanding that at some points I'm not smart enough or I didn't learn about this before, like all these things, like it's also a path of self-reflection in a sense, you know? So I think it's like, um, how do you say that? Like it's, 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 um, they are discounting my intelligence Inte or, 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 and, 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 and my motivation in a sense, you know, just because they cannot handle new, in let's call it new information, information because you can still decide if you care about it or not. Right. 
but but that's how I then feel, you know, like if yes. you share about this and people say, oh, you're just trying to get the next guy in. And then I just think like, yeah, that's such, but, it's such a pity. Like I, I pity yeah, that I think almost. the same. I totally think the same because uh, you are surrounded also from you think people who are intelligent, they have a good job, but they want to do good for the life, for the families. Yes. But still they are not getting it. And I think something that uh, I also feel it's a pity, but also firstly, let's think, 100 years ago, when the first cars were come, were produced, the whole world was against. When electricity came, the same. It was against. When internet came as well, they were saying it was for uh, um, criminals. So, it's, yeah. unfortunately, it's the same process. You linked to a Bill process. Gates video uh, in your article. Ah, yes, yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah. How he was uh, mocked by... Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so, this is... This is the first. The, um, the second point I want to say is uh, the biggest misconception. I think people are saying it has not intrinsic value. It's not backed by anything. Yeah. And these are legitimate, um, mis no misconception, legitimate points. Because if you think in our system, you think that is backed by the government and the value is because of the government is giving to the money. Yeah. But for me, it's different if they are curious or if they take as a statement. If they take as a statement, I learned to stop the conversation because um, the worst thing you can do in Bitco about Bitcoin, the biggest mistake is to have an opinion on Bitcoin, not having known about Bitcoin. So yeah. if they use as a statement, for me, it's like gone. Like this yeah, person, you don't know, don't you don't don't know enough. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, Unfortunately, he which seems... is okay, by the way, yes, which it's is totally okay. okay because we were there. We are so early, also. <laughs> yeah. we are so early. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. but instead, if it is as a question, because I also challenge, I also was asking, okay, but it's not backed by anything. How can it be money? I think for you, you had the same question at one point, but then you studied and you overcome. And yeah. they say the other biggest portion, and I, I think this is so so little. Um, highlighted is the Bitcoin energy usage. This is the biggest, on top of uh, no intrinsic value and money, the biggest misconception. Because not only yeah. is different, but it's the opposite. So I always yeah. say all envir environmentalists will be in favor of Bitcoin because they yes. have to, but they don't know that because they are, their knowledge on Bitcoin is so poor that they don't, don't allow yes. them to understand that they should be in favor, but they will be in favor. We have seen now in 2023, many more articles, KPM, KPMG accounting report, mm -hmm. also an academic article. I follow uh, Dennis Porter, uh, Daniel Batten, uh, Troy Cross, Daniel they are Batten, great. Daniel yeah. Batten, yes. But I am still, uh, uh, going to reach out to Daniel because I want ah, yes. him on to, to, to talk about this because I 100% agree with you that energy, like, I find energy usage also important yeah. as anyone. Why not? Yes. I don't know if it was in the KPMG article or another one, but the Bitcoin network uses as, as much energy now as all the tumble dryers in the U S alone. Yes, 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 yes. Less. Yes. And also it, the traditional banking system has more, um, uh, has a worse impact on the environment than Bitcoin. Uh, it's now also I saw a tweet today of Daniel Batten as well. Yeah. This is uh, yeah, this is the first step. Uh, going to the deep is which energy is using. That is excess of energy. But, but, but energy. you have to connect it. You have to connect it to why is it so important, right? So I yes, think there's two yes. factors here. So true. totally oh, true. Oh well, what if what if it uses less energy than uh, tumble yeah. dryers in America? Like what what value does Bitcoin actually have, right? Yeah, so, yes. so there should... you go into another dimension of Bitcoin which is the money again, right? Yes. Yeah. And they, that's why the, you should also know Bitcoin. But even then uh, at one point the Bitcoin network will become carbon negative. So they will uh, produce Bitcoin yes. and clean up the environment is something that is blowing up. It will uh, increase, it will in make the companies who use renewable energy more profitable. Uh, Troy Cross made a great example on this. He said, imagine you are a bakery and you have a, a customer that can buy any amount of bread at the end of the day or during the day at discount price. So you will become more profitable because you will not have waste anymore. And this is something mind blowing. It doesn't exist any other technology together no. with the methane um, emissions reduction. So Bitcoin yeah. is, we will produce 
no, no, not we will produce Bitcoin. Or this is another misconception. We will secure the network, and uh, the miners are getting the reward in Bitcoin. At the same time, we will clean uh, the environment. So we will, pro we will, uh, the emission, the total emission will decrease versus not using Bitcoin. That will be the end point. The trend is yes. clear. And uh, that will be a great day. Yeah, I love, yes. I love how how we can now see that. I even love it more that there's people who are actually building this and doing this and showing this to us that it's actually the case. And I think it's such an ironical way how fixing the money actually shows that you then also fix the world, which yes. shows that if the, the more broken the money is, the, the worse the world is actually. And, and, and so I think if we talk about fix the money, fix the world, this is one of the top things. If we fix the money, we actually also fix all the money. pollution, all the false incentives for all these commercial yeah. companies or even downstream in culture and p people spending their money on stupid. Yes. Or uh, stupid focusing stuff, their time nothing and energy. Wor nothing worthwhile. Or yeah, or having yeah. short-term thinking. In fact, uh, I totally agree. It's great to, to to see that there are uh, people around the world. And now we are more and more uh, thinking yeah, the we're, same. <laughs> we're not crazy. Well, a bit no, crazy, yes, maybe. No, we will, we can, <laughs> then I come back on this. Um, on the pollution and the rest, uh, many people are saying, yes, but money is just, uh, it's just something, a tool. Uh, uh, important is company, politics, uh, society, and, and educator, uh, teachers. I say, no, it's everything is about money. With better money, we will have better citizens. We will have better uh, teacher, better politi politicians, better society. Yeah. So it's the most important thing. And yeah. uh, back to we will be more. Why I'm confident it will become store of value is it is really un unpossible to uh, unlearn Bitcoin. I really cannot believe how a person... Yes reach your le your level of education or even mine is le definitely less than yours or other Bitcoiners you will invite in the stage, it cannot be possible that is going back to the... No. Is really... No, and so that's why the number can only increase. Also, we are all uh, young, relative young. I'm not so young anymore, but relative young, let's say. Uh, so yes, we, I will yeah. be talking about this for the next 40 years. But yes, right? exactly. So... so <laughs> yeah. If everything goes well, we will live 40, 50 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, but I think that's a great point. And also, I, I, I've sometimes said that as well. Like, eventually, Bitcoin is very simple, very straightforward. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a crazy, uh, like, rationalistic thing if you go through it. You know, uh, d despite like there's obviously this is an invention and new technology, but from the from I'd say core principles like uh, because it's ultimately transparent and you can audit it 24 seven, 365, anything done on top of that is that as well. Well, yeah. Right. So and because the current money system is not that. Anything built on top of that is it's obscure, also. vague, not controllable, you know, so you can do anything, right? And I think people in essence are self uh, uh, how do you say, Pre preserve, they, they want to preserve themselves, right? Yes. I want to die after you, right? <laughs> yes. And if I get an incentive because it doesn't really matter where it's where it comes from but but if i get a certain incentive to misuse the current system you do to better myself then of course i'm going to do that right of course yeah. people yeah. are going to do that it would be it's so naive to think that people do not do that right just because yeah. you wouldn't do that or think you think wouldn't you do, do that, that by the way does not mean that other people don't and there's countless examples actually i talked to nico yilk I don't know if you know him. I know. Uh, it's a, a financial journalist. I've been on his podcast and he told me about, there's this little book. And actually there was a fun uh, tweet from the author of the Bitcoin standard about um, the Bitcoin standard being the number one on Amazon and the number two book, or it has more reviews. It's called 
500 crashes or something like I probably say this title oh, okay. wrong, but it doesn't really matter. But it's a book about all the financial crashes, I think, in England in the past 200 years. Ah. So in the past 200 years, there were so many crashes yes. that there's a book. Oh, okay. Right? And I find that just, <laughs> just yes. fascinating because it's still the same system. It's still broken. There are still new people that partake in this system and abuse it just because they have the opportunity and it's not it's not that they are bad people or they do it maliciously like any anyone would probably do that if you eventually end up in that position and you would use the fact that most people don't even understand what money is like it 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 makes a lot of sense but again if we fix the base layer and the base layer is 100 percent transparent and up to date and we see everything then anything built on top will have to behave uh, according to the rules of the base layer. And totally that I also think what separates Bitcoin from crypto in yeah. that sense, because there you follow the rulers and not the rules, basically. Yeah, one of the misconceptions is also, they think that Bitcoin is part of crypto, but it's two different worlds. Uh, but we will reach at one point where uh, I think it's a common uh, process. You learn about Bitcoin, then you're interested also about some crypto, then altcoins, then uh, Web3, NFT. At one point, you recognize that uh, the only thing that matters is Bitcoin. Yes. And the rest, uh, the rest uh, I say, you can use, ca if you have casino money, uh, instead to go to the casino, uh, invest in uh, one altcoin. If you make money, okay, otherwise, no. But... Uh, Firstly, the savings and also the study should go uh, yeah. should go in Bitcoin. Yeah, 100%. I'm not ashamed to say that I played the ICO game and the NFT game and ah, the yeah, Ethereum yeah, okay. game. And Everyone all that. But, uh, but, but eventually, But I sold everything for Bitcoin uh, back. So that, that was yes. the whole goal was to get more uh, Bitcoin, to Bitcoin, of course. <laughs> yeah. Now, I 100% agree. Like with any new technology, it's just a wild west of copycats, alternatives and all. Like, yeah. of course, you know, so... Yes, but, we but don't also, really like it, but it's inevitable that it's there. Also, because uh, people are playing this role. First, some, you know, they really think that crypto is a thing, but some others, I think, they know that maybe crypto is not so much, but crypto will it's much more cool than only bitcoin like also maybe your podcast if you discuss about crypto you will have more people because people maybe want to know the base of bitcoin and that's it and then move to crypto what i'm trying and i think you you, know, you were also trying is to go deep into bitcoin and this is hard uh, hard work that many people are interesting oh there is the new bitcoin there is an ico in uh, 10 days, we, we do 100x. Okay, let's study this, pro yes, this uh, exactly. new crypto gem. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think, I think that goes also back to not understanding why Bitcoin is important. And of course, that's really hard, right? Because eventually they trade for dollars, they trade for euros, and which is fine. But that's, I think, it, not really what the core of Bitcoin is no, about, yeah, no, right? So it, it just shows, yeah. You're not trader. You cannot exactly. trade. You can, I mean, if, you're in, if you like trading, you can trade uh, a small portion, but the biggest, uh, I don't trade at all. For me, it's a uh, buy and hold. Me neither, yes. Uh, that's that's yeah, enough. 100%. It would be enough to have everyone, to have many people just buy and hold. <laughs> yeah. And eventually also there, I think, is, is again, like a really interesting almost self-reflection lesson or, or a philosophical lesson in there, like n just sitting on your hands, basically, right? Like just just well, understanding also... Bitcoin more, sitting on your hands, trying to share it with others, right? Like moving yes. from, okay, I have to acquire this asset because it's the best asset in the world, right? That's about value. That's about wealth. And then at one point, at least for me, I switched to more so that was for me and then i switched to more well hopefully the altruistic thing like telling others yeah right? yes. like i you, think you, everyone you should, uh, is going on this yeah yeah and so i love that that's amazing right like it's an asset a, a thing about wealth that actually pushes you towards helping others which again illustrates what positive impacts adopting bitcoin could have you know like at least that's what i get from that no no true i do the same uh, as i said before now i'm less proactively uh, 
but also we have to admit uh, most of the people will be interested because of the price is going up. So I think yes. also you're doing now a great job with the podcast. They will be much more seen and listened once we have the next bull run. Because yeah. now I think also your experience, everyone is experiencing with the last uh, 18 months, people are not so much interested. Uh, and once, the, for me, it will be the price is going up, they start a new bull run, some will be interested, and then our role will be much more important because we have to guide these people, or at least those who want to study, to uh, the right books, the right podcast, your podcast, and uh, articles and videos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. I think it's a great moment to uh, to start this podcast, to help, hopefully, yes. and eventually reach more people. So when we talk about, you know, then learning about Bitcoin, the best resources, you mentioned the Bitcoin standard, like what are other resources you would recommend that you learned a lot from? And now is, uh, I read also Principle of Economics from Safety. Uh, yep. price of uh, price of tomorrow and uh, a lot related to how eco the economy is working like economy one lessons how the economy works also uh, the um, paper money collapse i in my article there is a link with a pdf with uh, the videos yeah. i made in youtube and the best article the best books and the best video also following um, robert bridlove uh, michael Saylor. Um, now, Natalie Brunel, some videos. So, All right. there are, material is there. I listed, the, but people should know that it takes time. As I agree with you, now it looks easy. It looks simple. And I have also, the, we were talking last time in, in we were chatting in Twitter. You think I am a, I am a risk adverse. That's why I'm in Bitcoin. And I think the same. But uh, the normal person will, yes. will think that we are insane. But uh, it looks so simple. But then we have to also to reflect how much work, how much intellectual work we did to reach the level to think about this. So people need to do, there is no shortcuts. Uh, there is not um, orange peeling in three hours or two hours. There is making people curious, guide them. But then uh, these people need to do the work as the miners are doing the work to securing the network. They're consuming, uh, they are uh, yes, trying to guess the number, <laughs> <laughs> the number. Yes. yeah <laughs> all right and so when we move on to to the future you talk about bitcoin is a unique chance for our generation in the article yes like why do you say that i think there will be nothing comparable uh, to bitcoin uh, um, in the next 10 or 15 years now in the 90s barely no one understood internet as i said but uh, now if we say who were the smartest people uh, in the 90s or who were the people who benefit the most from what the time that they they used to study or to research were the people who studied internet no other discovery or invention can be similar the same is for us you have let's say we have uh, every, most of us also may have um, we have um, also um normal job let's say we call a fiat job is a normal job and then we have hobbies and my recommendation is always to put bitcoin of one firstly one of the hobbies and then become one of the most uh, relevant hobbies you don't have to uh, uh, study like uh, 10 hours per day also because it, it will be too much the brain needs time but you need to spend the time that you will spend them it will be uh, a, a great uh, um, reward later on one thing, mm -hmm. if, because Bitcoin monetary, because it, be, it will become store of value, and therefore uh, stocks, bond, uh, all the rest, it doesn't matter really anymore. But also, second for you, your growth, you will learn about economics, you will learn about technology, maths, energy usage, so you will become a much richer person for knowledge. Nothing is comparable to Bitcoin. And the time is this decade. Um, I think also, yeah, once you reach uh, 400, 500,000, 800,000, then it will become store of value. For sure, they will appreciate, but uh, the good times are gone. And this is exactly the, the best times are now, because five years ago, it was only few people, mostly gamers or people uh, in IT. In 10 years, it will be many people. Now is only yes. few. Everyone can get... Mm -hmm. 
if he's willing to spend the time. Yes, think hundred percent, hundred percent agree. I love that. I also think that probably twenty thirty. I talked to British Huddle. He's like his his like twenty thirty one target is like five million. I think okay. that is yeah. Pro it's never too late. I never. I don't want to say it's never too late, but let's say that this. I I also agree is the prime time to actually yeah do the work and try to learn and and I fully agree with it that with your point that it's a combination of probably some monetary reward, but especially you just get smarter. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes, you, you get also into more this. knowledgeable, and you, and you look at the. Yeah, and you look at the world in a different way and also you cannot unsee it once you really, really dove in, into this, you know. And um, yeah, I, th I think it's great also how you frame it as a hobby. It's just a super interesting thing to, to, spend, to spend time on. Um, two more things. One, the ETF. So I talked in another episode about the ETF. There's, I think, six or seven ETF approvals. ETF is um, a fund, an uh, exchange traded uh, fund. traded fund that uh, can be traded uh, on on a, on the market. Which uh, in the Bitcoin case, the the stocks basically, let's call them stocks or the certificates, will represent a certain amount of Bitcoin that BlackRock and these other applicants will hold like what's what is your idea here and i will uh, if you share yours i'll share mine uh, i'll be in a forecast of uh, mm -hmm. i would say to 2000 end of 2025 250k all right we'll say and i will i will be surprised if it is not at least 150k in uh in two year in uh, two years or in 2025 2030 yes he can go if I can say, I will say at least one million. The thing is, uh, there is no top because uh, the world never experienced an increase of demand with a, sup a finite supply. An increase, like there are 16 yes. trillion of companies, companies value 16 trillion going after an asset, 600 billions. And on top of that, a um, friend of me told me that first time also financial advisor told him about Bitcoin. First time that is financial advisor because uh, BlackRock, Fidelity, Invesco, they are leader in the world. So the, mm -hmm. these people are listening to them. Yes. They move also for every yes. financial advisor. So this is their this, industry blog. This is their in industry exactly, source exactly. of information, they, all these things. Yeah. There will be the institutional FOMO. I think there will be something huge yes. with a finite supply very few Bitcoin in exchanges. Uh, so yeah. I would say 250 end of 2025, one point, between 1 1.5 and 2 in 2030. Hmm, interesting. I think, um, I think let's touch on the, the finite supply uh, point, finality of supply. Also, you can say that, you know, like yeah. or final scarcity, like it's finite scarcity. Absolute scarcity also. Right, yeah. absolute scarcity or all these words. It's kind of all, all the same. All the same. Uh, British Hoddle in the first episode of the podcast also talks about this. I think I'm, I'm a bit more bullish uh, and I'll explain why. Yes. I don't think no, I don't think anyone really understands what this finite supply means, right? Yeah. So finite supply, there will only be 21 million Bitcoin. There's actually like four-ish million lost. So it will be 17 million. million. Don't, we don't understand this, right? So if you look at the gold rush, that that is not a final supply. There's still gold, right? People went into the ground and got more gold out. And, and so we, we just don't understand it. That's my... Yeah, yes. My, totally. my my base argument for this is we no one has a clue what is going to happen. I think, and I agree with you, you know, ETF approval means there's a green light for Bitcoin as an asset. Bitcoin is a legitimate asset or and store of value. I think that's the same thing in this context. So anyone whose job it is or anyone who's interested in preserving or growing wealth will want to buy this. And that's where 
I think the ETF approval is the starting gun of the great accumulation race. Yes, I call it the big bull run. <laughs> yes. Well, no accumulation race. Course, yeah. So okay. people, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people, people want to have it. This is the gold rush moment. The light turns green, okay, and it's a and it's a go. This is where the game theory part kicks in because you do not want to be last. The companies thinking about this, studying this. The companies who are already moving into this, I saw it was Oman is yes, building a uh, uh, mining, a, a mine, a mining uh, uh, one mil, uh, one billion investment. So anyone who's even remotely thinking about this, and maybe it'll take a little time, but at one point the supply on exchanges will go down, and then it really kicks in. I I think, yep. and anyone who buys it won't sell perhaps at a certain point perhaps you and i sell at a million to pay for a house and something yeah. and whatever right but any new buyer at that point will understand what they buy and they will also understand that they should never sell it right so the exchange supply goes down yeah i'm not 100 percent agree the new buyer i think they will be likely also to sell after two weeks of course four weeks, it goes, five weeks. It, of course, there's a there's a cadence. But then it goes they will up buy and again. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yes. exactly. So so we move up. It's like we a ladder. Yes, a step yes. steps steps up. But I, I do agree. think it will be it will be quick, because any uh, once the word is out and people understand, and I don't want to, like people understand like it's just clear what it is. Then again, anyone thinking about it will want to move into it. So anything that is for sale will be bought. Yep, agree. On the way up, right. Holder supply, uh, hodler, what they say, hodler, right? The people that are not selling will go up and there won't be any Bitcoin left to buy except for the daily supply eventually. And I think we will be there before 2030. And so I think 500K real quick yep, in okay. a sense that if everyone piles on and and the more the price goes up, I think the less people will actually sell because that will, that will re- in state the actual value of this thing the conviction. so that's that's what i think yeah but conviction but also understanding the like same. i i because the price goes up and apparently other people are willing to pay x amount 120 000 for bitcoin holy shit is this what i'm holding yes if it's 100 like i know if this gets to 100, it will get to a million yeah, and it same. will get to 10 million. I know. I, 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 like for me, 100K is the, is the goalpost and I don't need to know more. Same, if it's same. 100K, never, ever, I'm already never selling. But 100K is my conviction point. Then I know that it will be 10 million or even more because and then it's just a clear signal. I think the same, exactly. Uh, once we reach, in my article, I also write gradually and then suddenly. Suddenly, mm -hmm. now we have the phase uh, gradually, and is the you have time to learn to study. But later it will be the suddenly, and uh, people yeah. will and uh, will increase the the understanding. And we will, as Bitcoiner, we will all be become smarter. People will start to think, oh, but this guy was saying this <laughs> when Bitcoin was a 15, 20k, and for sure yeah. they will go to your podcast. Maybe they will read my article because. Uh, they will they will be a sign, and uh, I agree yeah. that the uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, it's it will be the green light. And uh, but also... they will need to know. That's the whole thing. <laughs> it's not even like, oh, oh, this is interesting. Let's read about. It. No, you need to know. This is the modern day gold rush, and that yes. sounds very fiaty and also like no, money it, driven. But that's not what I mean. Psychology of the I, 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 human. Yes, it's about. Wow, this is a new thing, but... and I need to understand it but right yes yeah actually also putting in the other position of the others we are saying so many things but in the last 16 months it went from 69 to 15 and now 25 so people it's also legitimate if you didn't study to to doubt or of course to challenge what yeah. we are saying we are saying you are saying two million imagine a person who is not understanding bitcoin i think okay it's, it could be yeah, you're an Tomorrow. idiot, of course. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, Makes total I also, sense. <laughs> I also say 500k or 1 million. And uh, for me, they when they ask me, at uh, which price uh, will you sell? Or when will you sell? And uh, my, always, my, question, my reply is always, selling for what? Like asking a Bitcoin to selling Bitcoin. I'll, or you sell, as you said, for an asset. 
if you want to buy a house or you like a motorbike at this point of time, car, then you should sell at one point. But uh, asking to sell for euro, dollars, or anything else, or yeah, stocks or bonds, is like yeah, exactly. uh, asking an owner of a house in US, asking to sell the house in, Bol in Bolivar or in Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, the currency of Venezuela. They will say, no way. Yeah, but they don't everything is inferior. You, yeah, you, exactly. you do not like, trade it for anything what? inferior. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree. All right, that's. Uh, I think that's a good ending segment. Ending uh, segment. Then my last yeah. question, I ask everyone, what's a core belief that you will never let go? A core belief? Ah, can I? Uh, related to uh, related to Bitcoin. Uh, um, Whatever. <laughs> I can say that uh, money, changing the monetary system is the, uh, now in my core belief is the biggest, the most important challenge of our generation. And this will not change. All right, man. Thanks so much for uh, being on. I loved it. Same. And, um, it was great to. Yeah, great to talk. And where can people follow you or find you? I will link in, uh, to everything, obviously. Yes, uh, in uh, Twitter, Alex Otta BTC. And then I have also a YouTube channel where I have like 70 plus videos uh, uh, explaining Bitcoin. And on this, I'm counting when people will be interesting. Thanks to the price going up, they will. Uh, I will share much more uh, my videos in order to guide the people uh, through understanding Bitcoin. Awesome, man. Thanks so much again. And uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you, Bram. Appreciate it. And keep going with the job. Great job. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bram K. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.